Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Instax SQ1, the latest instant camera from Fujifilm to use Instax Square Film. Like the hugely popular Instax mini series, the SQ1 is a fully analog camera, ejecting small prints immediately after pushing the button, which gradually develop before your eyes with the finished image appearing about 90 seconds later. The big difference between the SQ1 and the minis though are their larger square prints that share similar proportions to classic Polaroids. The Instax Mini and Square Photos may be the same height, but the Square versions look much larger overall, and I personally much prefer them too. Launched in September 2020 and available in chalk white, terracotta orange, or glacier blue, the SQ1 becomes the simplest and most affordable model to use the Instax Square Film to date. At launch, you're looking at spending $120 or pounds on the camera, although do keep an eye on the prices of the older models, like the more sophisticated SQ6, which may actually be available at a lower price still. Meanwhile, Instax Square Prints come in packs of 10, with twin packs generally representing the best value at around $18 or pounds, so that works out about 90 cents or pence per print. Only a little more than the mini film now, and for my money, way nicer to look at. Like the mini versions, Fujifilm also sells square film with different coloured borders, and there's now finally black and white film available in the square shape. The Instax SQ1 box contains the camera, a strap, instruction manual, a sticky pad to provide a little more purchase for your thumb, and a pair of disposable CR2 lithium batteries to power it. These should be good for around 30 packs or 300 prints. Sadly, there's no film included in the standard box to get you started, unless you buy it in some kind of bundle. Here's the SQ1 flanked by the Mini 11 on the left and the SQ6 on the right. It's kind of like a cross between them with the fully automatic simplicity of the Mini 11, but now with square pictures and the more angular design of the SQ6, albeit lacking its additional controls and motorized lens. Like earlier Instax cameras, the SQ1 is extremely simple to use. Round the back you'll find a large door for loading film, although do check the window first for a yellow mark, which means you've already got a cartridge loaded. If you do, a counter towards the bottom right will tell you how many shots you have left. If the counter says S, you're safe to open the door and load a new cartridge. Just align the yellow mark on the cartridge with the one on the camera, push it inside, then close the door. Next, switch on the camera by twisting the large circular lens barrel, which also extends the lens for use. Before you can take any photos, you'll first need to eject the initial safety sheet, so just push that shutter button and it'll pop out. You can throw this away. Now the counter on the rear will indicate you have 10 shots remaining and you're good to go. Here you can see I've got 4 shots left. Again, like the fully analog Instax models before it, composition is with a small optical viewfinder when you're behind the camera, or a tiny mirror to the right of the lens when you're in front of it, taking a selfie. I actually found the camera easier to hold for selfies as my thumb tended to get in the way of my eyes, I brought it to the viewfinder, and the shutter button is in a slightly awkward place. Either way, like all analog Instax cameras, you should expect some framing inaccuracies, especially at closer range, but not quite knowing what you're going to get is all part of the charm, right? The main control on the camera is the twistable lens ring, with two positions depending on the focusing distance. The first twist powers on the camera and focuses it on subjects beyond half a meter, while twisting it further to the selfie position refocuses the lens to between 30 and 50 centimeters for close-ups. When you're done, just twist it all the way back again to retract the lens and power it off. Beyond that, the SQ1 is fully automatic with no control at all over the exposure or indeed the flash which fires on every shot like most of the minis. Ok, here's some shots I took with the SQ1. The simple lens delivers mild wide angle coverage that's suitable for general use from portraits and selfies to buildings and landscapes. Exposure is again automatic, with the camera able to access shutter speeds from 1.6 to 400th of a second. That, with the fixed aperture and fixed film sensitivity, should cover you from fairly bright scenes to fairly dim interiors. Very bright scenes are however still likely to overexpose at least a bit, with washed out skies becoming a familiar sight on all the Instax cameras I've tested, but at least the SQ1 and the SQ6 are an improvement over the Mini 11, which has a fastest shutter speed of 250th of a second, and especially over the Mini 9's and earlier models which stopped at a 60th of a second and overexposed even in mild brightness. That said, I think Fujifilm should still boost the top shutter speed to 500th of a second or maybe a bit faster still on future models to better cope with very bright conditions. Meanwhile, at the other end of the scale, access to longer shutter speeds allow the SQ1 to follow the SQ6 and Mini 11 to capture more of the surroundings and dim interiors. 
Where older models like the Mini 9 and earlier often made every interior look like a dark nightclub, the newer models do a better job of balancing the light of the flash with what's behind it in the background. That said, don't expect miracles. At a certain point, there won't be enough light for the limited exposure range to deal with. Here's a selection I took of Brighton Pier just after sunset during the blue hour, but with no foreground for the flash to illuminate, I was left with little detail on the prints at all. And that's frustrating when you're spending the best part of a dollar or pound every time you push down on that shutter button. Ka-ching! That's not to say the Instax process can't make great looking prints of very bright or very dark scenes, but you're unlikely to be using an Instax camera to take them. If you love the Instax format and the print shape and are happy to trade the immediacy, surprise and ephemeral nature of the cameras for something a bit more predictable, you could simply buy an Instax printer like the SP3 on the left and feed it quality images from your phone, including photos taken with a bigger camera. Here's a couple I took during the same blue hour of Brian Peer using a Canon EOS 850D before then copying them onto my phone and sending them to the SP3. The DSLR shots are on the left and the SQ1 shots are on the right. As always, if you buy an Instax camera, you really do have to understand what it can and can't do. Here's a few photos around town with the SQ-1, including a bunch in the new monochrome film. The photo quality and overall capabilities are unsurprisingly similar to the Mini 11, albeit with the larger square prints. But even with the limitations, there's still no denying the charm of the Instax process. Yes, they can look faded at times, and yes, you don't always capture the exact framing you had in mind, but I still love the stylized look of the prints, as do most people I show them to. And judging from a bunch I have on a wall at home, they also have reasonable longevity as well. Instax remains by far my favourite of the instant formats. Overall, the Instax SQ-1 is a nice addition to the Instax family, bringing the fully automatic simplicity of the Mini 11 with the larger square format. Like the Mini 11, it's a pure point and shoot with no control beyond choosing whether the focusing range is near or far. If you desire a little more control over the exposure process, the Instax SQ-6 allows you to lighten or darken the exposure by two thirds of a stop, supports double exposures and even employs a motorized lens that extends to the desired length depending on the mode set on the rear. For me, this makes the SQ6 more desirable overall, plus it has the bonus of looking like a giant Instagram logo. Having tested several generations of Instax cameras, each new model may tweak the feature set with a few improvements, but I'm beginning to realise the choice between them is more about their actual style. Different generations are available in different shapes and colours, and these alone may draw you to one more than another. The SQ1, for example, is more angular, with bolder colours than the more rounded and pastel colours of the Mini 11. There's no correct choice here, just the one you prefer the look of. There's also price to consider. Each new generation of Instax camera faces the fact that the previous one is often discounted to a lower price. So while the SQ1 is in theory the cheapest model to take the square film to date, you may find the older but more capable SQ6 actually selling for less. This makes the SQ6 a no-brainer for me, even if it's pricey the extra control is worth having. If you want the cheapest Instax of all though, you'll need to go for the narrow mini format, and my choice in that series is the Mini 11 for its broader exposure range. Meanwhile, those who never want a wasted print, and like the idea of making Instax photos from their larger cameras, should get an instant printer, either the Mini for the smaller film, or the SP3 for square prints. I've got reviews of both models, and I often use the SP3 at home, although I still enjoy the more unexpected experiences with the fully analogue, self-contained Instax cameras. Ultimately, I love the Instax Square format, so unsurprisingly enjoyed my time with the SQ-1, and I'd buy it over the Mini 11 for those bigger prints. That said, I'd also prefer to have the slightly greater control of the SQ-6, but you may prefer the sheer simplicity of the SQ-1. Like many earlier Instax cameras, a lot will boil down to which colour and shape you prefer, and which has the best deal at the time you're buying. Whichever you end up getting, I still think every household benefits from having an instant camera, but before I go, a quick request for the Instax team. Any chance of making some new Instax wide products? A printer would be lovely, thanks. And that's it for another review. If you find my videos useful, please do give it a like and me a follow. And if I've helped you make a buying decision and you're feeling extra generous, there's a link below to shout me a coffee, plus links to check the best prices on a bunch of Instax cameras and the film. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.